Hi, this is PDF Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com and this is tutorial 178. So we're going to continue on with our player character customization. And let's just go ahead and open up Unity and I'll also open up Mon Develop. Uh, the next thing I want to add to our scene, uh, let me see, we left off, I believe we had just finished some scaling. Yes, so the next thing I want to add to my scene is the ability to change my skin color. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I have it set up where you could make a slider to scroll through various different colors of skin color, but since I really do want to limit the possibilities they have, uh, according to the actual uh, skin colors that actually came with my models, if we were to open up uh, character faces, and we just went through them here, we notice we have uh, kind of like a medium color. Well, that's the medium color that comes with them. And then we have a lighter color. Some guy who's been in his basement too long uh, making tutorials or something like that. <laughs> and then we have like a tan color. Now, of course, you could probably load these up, uh, the textures themselves, up into Photoshop or whatever your favorite editor is and uh, just kind of make them darker to make even more possibilities. And you could probably just mask out where the eye is so you don't accidentally make the eye dark as well. But I'll leave that up to you if you want to make more than uh, one shade of skin tone. But what I've gone ahead and done is loaded up this texture and just made a little clipping of a 32 by 32 square just under the ear. And I've gone ahead and saved those under, let me shrink some of these up, uh, skin tones. Now you notice I'm starting to get quite a few folders here under my resources that deal with the character. And we, we could have called this character skin tones. They have character models, character faces. Uh, we might want to combine that into one folder and make a hierarchy under that folder just to kind of keep things you know, neat. I find once things start getting out of control, a little messy, uh, it can be hard to actually get things back under control. But anyway, here are my three little uh, skin snippets. And all I'm going to do is, uh, I guess we'll make, um, I want to keep things as 3D as possible because we've already seen how to do things with uh, using on GUI. Uh, so I'm going to make three little cubes and I'll just place them on the screen somewhere. And when you click them, it'll actually change your skin tone. Now we aren't going to be able to actually change the skin tone until we get into actually giving the ability to uh, change that, well, like the face and the hands. So we won't be able to change it right away, but we can at least set it up and get it ready to either send a message or We'll probably start using static burials a little bit more since that's all we really need for this scene. But we can at least get it set up. So let's go ahead into our scene. And I'm going to create a game object. It'll just, uh, actually, let's not make it an empty. I'm actually going to make a cube. And the reason why I'm picking a cube over a plane is there's just fewer polygons. Now this is obviously way too big. And it helps if I'm in scene view to actually maneuver things around. I'm going to split my scene view and my game view just so I can see both. And I'm also going to want to scale this down. Uh, right around there and I'll want to position it uh, for now I'm just going to throw them down here uh, I don't want to go through my train or things I have around that I'm using for my train uh, let's just put it down here for now and I'm just going to double it move it over a bit double it move it over again and since I only have three skin uh, textures, I'm just going to go ahead and actually apply them. And another way is we could do it kind of like we do with the cube, just make an array, and as we click through them, uh, it changes. But we've already seen an example of how to do that. So this time I'm going to actually add a different texture to each one. And uh, whatever one you click is the one that's going to actually uh, show up on your character after we actually add the ability to change your character's skin. But let's go ahead and start setting these up. So I'm going to start off with the lightest. So we'll just open up the renderer. Uh, we'll also be using the default diffuse texture, or sorry, uh, shader. So I'm just going to come down here and create three materials. 
And I'm just going to call this uh, skin dark, skin light, skin medium. Yeah, I'll put a space in there. I guess we'll do an underscore just like we did with the actual texture. And skin medium. Or med. And I'm just going to take these and assign the texture to them. There we go. So we've got three textures set up. I'm going to go ahead and select my cubes. And I'm just going to go from lightest to darkest. So we'll paste that one there. Now I'm going to leave my lighting. It probably doesn't look the best. But since this is just kind of a demonstration to get things working. Uh, I clicked on the wrong one. That's fine. I'll just let go. Select it again. And we'll take the next one, which we'll make dark. So they don't really show up too good. Uh, I'm going to rotate them all. I'll probably have to zoom in closer so I can click them. I guess I could just highlight them here. And I do want to rotate them all together. And let's also rotate them this way a bit. They don't necessarily have to be perfectly lined up with the camera. I don't really mind having the uh, shading on the side. I'm just going to start that up and just take a look, see how it, see how it looks in game. It looks fine. I guess we're going to have to. I guess we'll just maximize our full screen just so we can see how everything's positioned. And this is actually the size of my web player, so we can see how everything is. I guess I should have looked at that a little bit closer when I was making my scaling tutorial, but that's fine. Like I said, I just want to get the functionality working and we can always move things around and then add styles to them later. So that's pretty good. We'll just stick with that for now. So I'm going to go into my scripts and I want to create a script uh, to change the skin tone. So let me see, we'll just throw it in scripts. Uh, we'll make it a C sharp script, of course. And I'm just going to call it Skin Tone Changer. Actually, it doesn't really change the skin tone, it's a skin tone selector. Now, of course, I, right after I've done the tutorial, I'll think of a better name for it, which will be too late, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and Let's just rename the class. I'm going to close that off and I'm going to go ahead and select each of these cubes before I rename them. And I'm just going to add the script to them. And while I'm at it, I'm going to create an empty just to clean the scene up a bit and I'm just going to call this skin tones and let's just throw all these under it but I want to rename them first so skin dark and I'll throw it under my skin tones uh, we'll take the next one which was skin medium I can't remember if I used capitals or not. I generally like to keep them the same. And then we'll grab the last cube, which should be light. There we go. It just cleans up our little uh, hierarchy here. And since I'm recording in 720p, I really don't get a lot of room down here. Right. I'm actually going to keep it open and uh, well, let's just go in and start changing some of the values here. If we go ahead and look at the way these faces are created, uh, you'll notice that the skin tone is really the second variable over here, one, two, three. So if we select the first one and we just look over here, of course it could be different for your model and you'll want to set it up according to your model, uh, but I'm actually going to keep these naming conventions. 
So here's head one, head two, head three. I guess we'll keep them all in the same position. And you notice the only thing different is the uh, the color of the skin. And if you go through, they're all diffuse as well. So there's three basic versions of each head, and there's eight heads. Okay, I probably won't be using this one here for our player character. That'll be an NPC. Uh, this one as well. So six and up. Yeah, so there appears to be three for each head. And three colors for each head. So I'm going to keep this naming convention and just allow myself to tag each one with a public variable. Oops, sorry. I was doing some stuff in JavaScript earlier. And I'm just going to call this color code uh, with a small c. And I don't know, by default, I'm just going to start it off at 1, so it has some value. And let me just take a look. It goes, color code 1 is the medium, color code 2 is light, and color code 3 is dark. So dark was 3, light was 2, and medium was 1. Now this is the value when it's selected that we're going to be sending off to our character mesh to have it update and well display the proper one and the reason why we're gathering everything in our player customization mesh is we can easily uh, when we go to save the values just grab them all from this script instead of trying to go around and grab different values from each script and just save them all out here of course we could actually create another script that only holds the values for it but we'll just do it this way here for now so I'm gonna make another public static and I'm gonna call this uh, skin color and I am going to start it off at 1. And we got to tell it what type it is. It's an int. I'm actually going to start moving some of these down. Uh, some other things you might want to look at is creating this. Well, we don't need it to be public. But that is something that we are going to have to save. And well, I can go through these after. So let's head back into skin tone selector. Actually, we need a small s here to keep the same naming convention. But let's go back in and I'm going to get rid of the start and the update as I'm not going to need those. And I'm not even going to bother putting the highlight code in. Uh, we've done that in a few places already. Uh, the sex changer, our chests, uh, actually, I believe we have the exact same code down here as well for our little rotation buttons. So you can just cut and paste the code there if you want these to highlight when you're going over them. And since we're actually using it so much, it'd probably be a, a good uh, homework project to be able to find a way to extrapolate that little piece of code out and be able to just reference it easily uh, within these other classes so we don't have to keep rewriting it. But I'll leave that up to you. What I do want in here is our button clicks. So public void on mouse down. I believe that's what it was called. I always get them confused. So I'm just going to do a quick debug log. And I'm just going to say pressed. All right, so we got that done. Uh, no error. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And I'm just going to click one. And I'll be able to see it down here. So if I click one, pressed. All right, so I know if one works, they all work. So basically, when we press that, all we really want to call is our uh, player model customization dot. I believe we called it skin color is equal to uh, color code. And of course, now that I type this, I realize that's not actually going to work as it's going to assign a new value to our color code. But what it's not going to do is actually change the uh, to the proper head. So for instance, if we start this up, I'm starting off with uh, head one underscore one, which is the medium color. And if I select here, it should actually switch to head one underscore two, 
and of course if I select here it should switch to head underscore three so what we're actually going to want to do is not just create a a variable here to hold it in and we'll still want a variable but what we'll really want is an actual function so I'm just going to quickly come down to the bottom and I'm going to add that now so it will be static and I'm going to call it change player color skin color I'm not going to take a variable I guess we could now I'll just pass it in it really doesn't matter. oh we're not going to because we're going to adjust it manually anyway ah screw it we'll just take a color make it easy And we'll just make a comment here to change to proper head and hands for the color because the character's hands can also change color. And then we'll also want to store the color the player has selected. And my dog's barking in the background, which means my wife is back from the store. And we can just say skin color is equal to the color being passed in. All right, since my wife's back, we're going to have groceries download. So I'll just end this one here, and I'll see everyone in a bit. Bye-bye.